Hey, hey, this is just a warning that this video is for the older audience in the fandom. Also, obvious Dragons Rising Season 2 Part 2 spoilers ahead. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Oh my god, we can finally talk about Dragons Rising Season 2. So, in case you weren't aware, the second part of Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2 leaked months before it was set to come out. And the fandom was... It was normal about it. I mean, this isn't the first time half a season was leaked. But... It's now officially out, which means we can finally talk about it. And it was... well, I enjoyed it. Obviously, nothing is ever perfect, but something about the season felt... off to me on my first watch. Actually, to be honest, it was better the second time around, but that doesn't quell any of my worries. Anyways, let's talk about it. So let's start strong. All in all, the season was, in my opinion, pretty good. Sure, they reused a theme from ages ago, but it felt like it was needed. They have so many elements they want to explore, so what better way to do it than to reintroduce the Tournament of Elements? Also, Lloyd's element has most likely officially been named. Chen originally called it Energy, but I think I trust the guy whose whole family legacy consists of running Tournaments of Elements more when it comes to naming his power. Anyways, Lloyd has the element of life, in that Makes a lot of sense. Bloodfire and Ruby? Cute. Felt a little forced at times, but I'm glad she's keeping up the tradition of a red ninja having a crush on a character that's related to the big bad of the Tournament of Elements. It just feels right. <laughs> Geo and Cole have a little moment after we learned that Lily had another mech for some reason. I mean, I can't really get mad at her for it. The ninja get a new mech like every season, and Cole obviously feels a special connection to it. Nia grieving two of the people she's closest to and then being thrown into the ring to go against Jay? Wonderful, couldn't have asked for a better fight between them, especially since the round mirrored Jay and Cole's match in season 4. Like grabbing a blade off of a tower? Kai's connection with Nia being utilized and is what brings him back was great, and the fight that followed was really well choreographed. And all the taunting about Kai's absence from the other side riling up Wildfire and Nia was really good. That was a lot of fun to watch. We got some cameos from other elemental masters and even got to see how Paleman looks when its element is taken away. We were all pretty confused when this didn't happen in season 4, so I'm glad they addressed that little plot hole here. Honestly, my little theory is that Chen's staff didn't truly take away their element because I think it was stated somewhere that they could still rekindle the power inside them after a little bit. But with the Tournament of Sources, since they have a better understanding of elements and where they come from, it's probably probably like a legitimate they're taking away your power like you're empty there's nothing else that's my theory we got a little hint that cole is going to be taking on his own student frack the master of quakes and aaron had a little falling out with the ninja mainly lloyd and sora well i know a lot of people are kind of eh on Aaron's betrayal arc. I feel like it makes a little bit of sense. Okay, his falling out with Sora was a bit much, but to be fair, Raj probably helped blow it out of proportion. Other than that, him losing trust in Lloyd is valid, especially when he now has somebody to compare his progress to through Frack, who used to work under Raz. Also, I like the little parallel we all noticed of Lloyd and Aaron mirroring Wu and Moro. I think it's fun. So now that we've talked about the good, let's talk about everything else. So while Jay and Nia's fight was fun, he leaves right after. Sure, it was just Roz trying to bait the ninja out of the tournament, but man, really? We also don't get to see how he and Raj meet. And like, maybe we'll get to see that in the future. But his appearance in joining Raj aside felt too sudden. Was there hesitation when Raj met up with him the first time? Did he reject Raz's offer or like call him out on his lies? I want to know so bad, but his introduction into the tournament just felt so... Hollow. I, I was also hoping for there to be a Cole and Jay rematch, but oh, oh well, it's fine. Staying on the topic of Nia's connections, what was with the Kai subplot? Maybe it was just the fans hyping it up a lot. I saw a lot of theories on Kai possibly interacting with the remaining Forbidden Five members, but it feels like all he and Bonzo do is call it to Ryu while the others, minus Wildfire and Nia, don't mention their absence. Like, Cole's not going to say anything about Bonzo being gone, even when he's out with Geo, You know, the guy he's co-parenting Bonzo with? I mean, he had next to no reaction to Jay's return, but really? Anyways, just when I think they're taking Kai and Bonzo's subplot somewhere when he reaches out to Nia, they all just disappear for a few episodes before Nia comes back at the end being like, I found something! I'm kind of disappointed with the lack of content with the original Elemental Masters from season 4. 
Maybe it's just because Nero was my favorite side character from the original tournament and he only got like five seconds of screen time. But please! The Toxin Palman stuff was great, but you can't just leave him like that. Speaking of elemental masters who weren't there. You know what? I can't actually excuse Skylar sitting the tournament out. She probably took one look at her invite and went back to work because there was no way she's going back into a tournament of elements. And you know what? Good for her. But I would have at least liked a reference to her. I mean, I'm glad that they at least referenced Chen and made some references in season four and the last part of the season. Do you know whose absence I can't excuse though? Karloff's. Actually, maybe I can. He was the first to get eliminated in season four, so maybe he wanted to sit out for the sake of his own ego. Or just didn't find the last tournament fun, so he's like, no, never again. <laughs> Zane very clearly has been off this season. I can't remember if him being more robotic has been a consistent thing throughout Dragon's Rising, but it was definitely apparent this time around. Also, him losing the tournament right away wasn't great, especially when he didn't get to participate last time since he was being held captive, but I guess his fight was able to foreshadow that something is up with the way things were run here. I don't know, they needed somebody to be eliminated right away to showcase this, and I guess I'm just disappointed it was Zane, even though he's the only logical answer when it comes to the story they wanted to tell. This section is all about what I'm hoping is going to come in the next season, so let's move on from Zane and talk about somebody else. Or three people? So I am very clearly passionate about Kai and Nia's dynamic, and when Jay was brought back and Nia was going to go after him alone, I was kind of disappointed. Like I knew they would have to focus on Jay eventually, but I was hoping it wouldn't just be the two of them. And it isn't. Nia updates Kai on the situation with Jay and without any hesitation, Kai is like, okay, when do we leave? And I just, I can't wait. Loki hoping for a genuine rematch between Kai and Jay while they're trying to get through to him, but I'm not getting my hopes up. I've already been disappointed by the lack of Cole versus Jay rematch. I can't let a lack of Kai versus Jay rematch disappoint me either. I do hope Kai has some sort of goodbye scene with at least Wildfire. I'm also hoping for a Lloyd goodbye scene because like RGB siblings, you know. But she spent a good chunk of the season being taunted by his absence, only for Kai to leave right after coming back. They need one moment alone together. Anyways, Cole and Frack, another student. I really hope we get to see Cole training Frack in the coming seasons because that'd be really good. And possibly cause some moments of jealousy with Lloyd since he just lost his student only for Cole to gain his own, maybe. Probably not, but wouldn't that be interesting to explore? Anyways, this season was good for what it was. We got world building, progressed the plot, and got lots of memorable character interactions and moments. So what did you think about the season? Was it good? Bad? Feel free to write an essay about your feelings on it in the comments. I actually really like reading big chunky analysis stuff. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video and if you did, maybe like and subscribe. I make art and commentary videos and your support would mean the world to me. If you want to see more of my stuff, I have my social links in the description along with my Etsy shop. I'll see you all later. Bye!